Yes, we kept talking last week about how love is beyond yourself. Sometimes pain puts you in the position to go out of yourself, to love others. Sometimes it's just a decision that you make. We couldn't finish the conversation, but I met each character last week. So if you didn't catch it, you better go online to find it. But today, you're going to experience how they play out love in their own lives and in the work that they do. As always, the whole idea is to inspire you to get up and do some of the things that they do. Love it in this instance through Ibiduni Iwodalo Foundation, through the Little Beginnings, through um, Brook House, and then, of course, through, I would just say through Eme, because you have two hearts. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. We'll be back in a short while on the panel, if you don't go away. Welcome back, and I'm going to start straight from Brook House, because Brook House, you took in students who are, I hate to use the word not normal. What's the best word to use for them? What does that mean? Wow. Neurotypical. Neurotypical. Yes. They're not the regular not, kids, yes. right? They're, and they're in your school. They are regular. Yeah, they are regular. They're regular. just not. They are just not neurotypical. Edu okay, tell me, please. Let's start with you then. Okay. Educate me. Okay, so neurotypical children are what you just called normal or regular, and there's nothing abnormal about children with special needs. Okay, because God has created them like that. So it's, and every child with special needs is fine where they are. You know, we are the ones that want them to come out of, into our world. They are, they, they are functioning the way they are. They, they, for them, they are just fine. They are normal. They do everything. But for us, we think that, oh, this isn't quite right. Oh, you're making too much noise. Oh, you're not, you know, the society, you're not quite fit in society. You know, and then we now say, okay, we need to now do therapy and do... And then because they can't fit into the then, society the way we have it. No, yeah. no, because... Children with special needs have a lot of things going on all at the same time. I mean, I, had, I was saying offset um, earlier on how other things, that other senses, you know, like, I, like you are talking to me now, the light is on, and you're still able to focus and listen to me. Children with special needs are not able to, they're not able to put all of these things together well, I think all it depends at the on the kind of time. needs that they have. Yes, it, it, also, the kind of needs. it also mm -hmm. depends on, yes, so, and, they're, and they're very you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of special needs. So you, you, it was difficult for you at the beginning, you say, yes. because you didn't know how to manage them. Mm -hmm. But you've learned that it's not really that bad. No. But who had it hardest? The students that had to take them in or what? Um, I would say it's the 55th third. Because they are coming from their own school and we are in our own school. The children in Brook House haven't met children with special needs. And I'm sure they haven't worked with the regular children, like we say. So it's a 50-50 mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. both sides. What has made it easier to adjust? Um, like we're talking about love. It's all about love. You show them love. And when you use handsome materials also to teach them, and let's not forget the bottom line, God. <laughs> so, of course, we can't rule out God. Brook House is a Christian school. And uh, we pray and ask God to help us. We're just instruments there to guard the children. Now, that, that brings me to Emma, who's also an instrument, right? But in the, in the whole course of your adoption series that you're working on now, right, haven't you had situations where there are children with disabilities and, you know, do parents take them easily? No, I would say no, especially for people in Nigeria. But well, we have a very interesting and um, happy story of a Caucasian couple who came to Nigeria and they particularly asked for a child who was HIV positive. Wow. Uh, yes. And you um, had one? We had a child like wow. that. So we were able to match that child with the couple there in the Netherlands and she's thriving. She fell very ill shortly after she left um, Nigeria to go to the Netherlands and ended up in hospital, nearly died. If she were in Nigeria, she would have died. So you see, that's, that's, that's one thing that brings me to what Ibiduni is trying to do with her foundation. Because nobody knows where life will end. You know what I mean? Here's Ibiduni, people still see you as a beauty queen. Now, everything worked right, you got married, no kids, now you're helping other people who have children. You know, out of what did that come? It takes, it came out of pain. And you know, God uses your pain for his own gain. I don't think if I had gone through that pain, I would have had that heart to do what I'm doing. You have to experience this pain to know what other people are going through. 
it's not a place you pray for anyone mm -hmm. to be, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's very, it's not easy for you to save the, the money you, you can use for your own treatment. Because you, you still have the chance to have a child. So like you, when you started, you were thinking, is of me spending this money on myself? Yes. I'm going to start spending this on others before people started to help you. Yes, I've been using my, my phones. My phone and my husband's phone. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've harassed my husband. And, but I, I had to do that. Mm -hmm. So the money that I could have used for my own treatment to, to save, you know how much IVF cost? I take it and I pay for other families. The first time we did 28 couples, last year we did 16 before people start coming to sponsor two couples, one couple, two couples, only for us to get this phone like call. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it, takes, it takes grace for you to love other people more than you. I mean, that's, some people still think I'm a bit out of my... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've gotten phone calls. I've, I have an aunt who called me and said, you know, Yoruba's, you know, she means well. Mm -hmm. She says, it's like, why don't you face your issue? Why are you running after other people's and paying for their own when you can use it to pay for yourself? And I just smiled and said to her, you can't understand it. Nobody can. So what the beauty about it is if your partner understands what you're doing, then it's <gasps> Oh, he's yeah, totally, that no. He's totally, <laughs> he's totally with me. I think I get what you're trying to say, Biduni. The point is, without support, you can't get far, whatever it is. And support, do you work for the support? Or is it a function of God just being kind to you? Till day, God has been kind. But I still work for it, because I still go out and I tell people, you have to support this foundation, please. I need you to help my couples. We're trying to raise money for this, for this, for that. And people have been very kind. That's interesting, because you've done 28 couples as at... Like, the first time was 28. The first time was 28. This. And you have only three babies. Yes. That means there are a lot of failures. Yes. How yes. does that make you feel? But I wouldn't call them failures because um, in the first set, we, have five, we had five pregnancies confirmed. And they all went, two of them went up to the third trimester and then they had a miscarriage. The other two went up were just the first trimester. So it was just one that was full term. Now, I wouldn't call them failed because after they, they, they were happy that you, you, know, you mean I can actually, I actually got pregnant. Yeah. That's in itself. So those, that's a step uh -huh. for, for, for some mother. of them, for any mother. The fact that you, you, you even were able to even feel that feeling of pregnancy. So it is so, it, I mean, the next mm -hmm. one would definitely be mm -hmm. yes, by mm -hmm. the grace of God. Okay. And then some of them don't even go as far as, it's a pregnancy test and then they, they get pregnant naturally. We have a case like that right now from the first set. Mm -hmm. She went to the hospital. They found out that she had only PCOS, polycystic disease of the ovaries. And my doctor just gave her tablets. She's pregnant. Simple as that. At the conference, we had a woman talk about sex, and she was talking about sex positions, how to enjoy yourself while you, while you wait. And this a friend of mine, she came for the conference. She said, she's not pregnant? Oh, she said she tried one of the positions. She put a pillow under her bum, and she, now she's pregnant. Wow. The little things that we can do. So it's beyond just you know trying to get you to be pregnant through IVF. Yes, or it's just beyond trying to get that. you to experience motherhood. And I'll take a break. I must take a break so I can come back because I even though you don't call them failures, to those of us looking outside, it's like it's a failure. Yes. But I hear there's a solution. I'll be right back with my guests. Mm -hmm.